a pretty nice breakout here, uh, first time really since February. What's driving it, do you think? Yeah, I think there's there's a, a renewed you know interest in just the sustainability of demand in the end markets. Um, we've got Micron obviously reporting tonight after the close, but I think you know just in general, I think there's been a rotation back to some of the growth areas. We've seen Nvidia break out. We're seeing AMD uh, have some strength here as of late, uh, and I think there's just some renewed interest in just the end demand uh, that we're seeing across the semi space. So for the second half, I wonder. Um, What's going to be the most interesting thing to watch? Is it is it gaming? Is it data center? Is it automotive and some better supply demand dynamics? Something else? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I mean, I, I think as we look at you know our coverage, I think the data center uh, in particular is the area of, of keen focus. We've got a pretty strong server CPU cycles materializing through the course of this year from Intel as well as AMD. Uh, we've got the continued proliferation of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, driving the data center business for guys like uh, NVIDIA. Uh, and I think you'll hear positive commentary from Micron tonight on just the sustainability of demand that they're seeing in the DRAM market in particular uh, in the data center side. I think the other vertical is definitely uh, easing constraints in auto. I think sustainability of demand in PCs. Uh, and then obviously we'll get, uh, you know, the iPhone 13 cycle from Apple will be a key focal point into the back half of the year. Right. When you hear from old timers who are who've been around long enough to see boom bust and they know what gluts look like on the other side of an environment like this one, what do you tell them? Is this any different? Yeah, I think I think there is a little bit of a structural change here in the market. I think you're seeing obviously the constraints, not just in auto, but across other verticals driving uh, the end customers to hold a little bit more inventory. And so I think that there's there's been some angst around that inventory build. I think Structurally, we're seeing companies a little bit more comfortable of holding a bit more inventory uh, to, to, to alleviate some of those constraints. Uh, and I think, again, I think the end markets and semis has become more diversified. It's not just smartphones and PCs. It's the data center proliferation of AI. Uh, it's the automotive industry. It's industrial. Uh, so I think that's what makes this cycle a little bit, uh, in our opinion, uh, uh, stronger uh, and longer uh, than what we've seen in the past. Aaron, Aaron, so bottom line, looking across all the different stocks you cover, top pick right now. Yeah, so we definitely like Micron. We were out last week saying, you know, we're buyers in front of the print on, on, on the print tonight after the close. We think this is an 8 to $9 through cycle earnings power story, uh, peak earnings into the $13 range. And we think that there's a secular growth story here uh, that's still very much underappreciated. I think second to that, NVIDIA, obviously, from a platform perspective, uh, is definitely a name that we've continued to be constructive on. Finally, on auto, um, there's a lot of expectations that this is going to get better, uh, not worse, in the second half in terms of the supply. I see IH, IHS Market is out today saying expect a reasonable level of auto demand uh, in the final quarter. Do you think we're setting ourselves up for failure here, or does it actually look good? Yeah, I think, I think we're constructive on auto. I mean, you know, for my coverage universe, I've got a colleague of mine here that covers a little bit more some of the suppliers in the auto space, so I'll defer to them a bit. Uh, but I think, you know, for, for my coverage, I think the auto space will continue to recover. Uh, Micron does play into that again tonight, reporting results. NVIDIA, obviously, very well positioned as far as uh, the proliferation and drive towards autonomy. Uh, they've talked about an $8 billion pipeline of opportunity over the next couple of years. And so, you know, those are the names that I cover that uh, we think play well uh, in that auto category. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.